Good morning, everyone. We know all of you are very excited for our upcoming event today. We will start our program at exactly 9.05 in the morning. But before anything else, we would like to remind our virtual participants to please keep in mind these reminders at all times. Make sure that your microphones are always on mute. We encourage everyone to always turn on your videos for us to clearly have a feel of your presence in our event. Please put the name of the agency in your name so that we can recognize you during our program. And lastly, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. In about two minutes, we will start our most awaited event. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, to our administrator, deputy administrator, officials, directors, guest speakers, friends from the regional offices, and our maritime stakeholders, a blessed morning to all of you. I know all of you are very excited because this is our day one of the series of Maritime Industry Symposium that will enlighten us about initiatives, innovations, and investments to sustain the course of the Philippine maritime industry still in connection with our week-long celebration of the National Maritime Week 2020. Last Monday, we officially commenced this year's celebration through presentation of our partner agency's accomplishments and launching of projects and initiatives such as the opening of the Marina MRO NCR with the theme, Working Together as One for Sustainable Maritime Philippines Despite the challenges brought to us by the pandemic this year, we are still all intact and in unity to promote and innovate the welfare of our maritime stakeholders. Since this is a historic event, wherein we did all of this in a virtual platform, 
we encourage everyone to actively participate in our symposium. And during the presentations, you may use our reaction icons that you can see in the bottom part of your Zoom account. You can click the applause icon every after presentation or the like icon to show appreciation on the things that you can see in our program. So before we start, uh, may we ask for God's presence and guidance through our invocation to be led by Marina Domestic Shipping Service Director, Attorney Rowena Hubilia, to be followed by the singing of the National Anthem. Let us bow our heads to feel the presence of God. Loving Heavenly Father, we come to you at this hour asking for your blessings and help as we virtually gather today to celebrate the National Maritime Week. We pray for guidance in the matters at hand. Show us clearly how to conduct our activities with a spirit of joy and camaraderie. Give us the wisdom and inspiration to excel in our endeavors and assist us as we work in, the collabor in collaboration towards the achievement of a common goal for the greater good. But while we hurdle to overcome the given challenges, we likewise pray for protection against the infirmities that the prevailing virus may bring. Keep us safe from any harm that may befall us. This we humbly ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bayang magiliw, pelas ng silanganan, alab ng puso, sa dibdib mo'y buhay. Lupang hinirang, durian ka ng magiting, sa manlulupig, di ka pasisigil. Sa dagat at bundok, sa simoy at sa langit mong bugaw, may dilagang tula at awit sa paglayang minamahal. Ang kislap ng wataw at mo'y tagumpay na nagniningning Ang bituwing na araw niya kailan pa may di magdidilim Lupa ng araw ng walhati pagsinta Buhay ay langit sa piling mo Aming ligaya na pag may mga api Ang mamatay ng dahil sa'yo So to formally begin our series of symposiums for this week-long celebration as part of the NMW 2020, may we be graced by none other than the Administrator of the Maritime Industry Authority, Vice Admiral Robert M. Pedrad. Let's give him a round of applause. Thank you, Eva. Magandang umaga sa ating lahat. In behalf of the personnel of the Maritime Industry Authority, let me take this honor and opportunity to express to everyone our sincerest gratitude for sparing your precious time to be with us this morning. Your presence is a manifestation and assurance that you do care for the progressive, for the progress of our maritime industry and our maritime nation as a whole. The three-day symposium has three major features. Number one, it is to raise our awareness and developments of the Philippines maritime industry. And through this coming together, we could strengthen the cooperation and partnership amongst the stakeholders. Number two, it is to integrate programs and projects of our industry partners in the Maritime Industry Development Plan for its full implementation. And third, to come up together, to come together to exchange ideas and opinions to enhance a culture of safety of life at sea, that is safer ships and cleaner marine environment. But then at the end of the three days symposium, we should be coming up with strategic plans of actions and solutions as we move 
forward in our pursuit of a progressive maritime industries. We will be discussing on initiatives, innovations, and even investment. Why do we discuss about investment? We talk about investment in order to alleviate the huge losses that the maritime industry suffered during the time of pandemic and even in the coming days. We must move forward, we must press on, and we shall restore the momentum that we had before the March 16 crisis. By the way, the word crisis is composed of two characters, one representing danger and the other one representing opportunity. This is a great reminder to all of us that we can rise above our fears. We shall take courage and focus on the opportunity instead of the losses, instead of the dangers. Sabi nga nila, courage is not the absence of fear. It is being able to move on, press forward, despite the presence of fear. That said, ladies and gentlemen, we must come together and labor as one maritime sector in the spirit of Bayanihan for, what, for us to weather this storm or crisis. We need to adjust our strategic plans to determine what are immediate components to be pursued under the new normal, as we used to say. The three-day symposium will form a strong foundation of what we should be in the future. Let me share a short passage from the Bible with you, found in Amos 3, chapter 3, verse 3. And it says, Can two people work together without agreeing on direction? As I say again, can two people work together without agreeing on direction? So, ladies and gentlemen, as I share to you, as I share to you the passage from Amos 3, 3, I encourage one, everyone, that we should sail together as one, as I said, in the beneath, in the spirit of Banibayanihan so that we can achieve our goal of a progressive maritime Philippines. At this point, may I request everyone to join me as we pause for a moment of prayers to all the seafarers out there in the sea for their safety and well-being and for all those who perish and their loved ones for peace in their hearts. So join me, please, as we pause for a moment of prayer. Thank you. Let me end by congratulating Team Marina for their labor, for putting everything in coming up with a week-long, meaningful, and productive celebration of the National Maritime Week. Congratulations to all of you. You are indeed an inspiration to me as your administrator. And for everyone, let us give Team Marina a round of applause. Again, maraming salamat. And we hope that we will be working together as friends in the spirit of Bayanihan in this three-day um, symp symposium or what we call Maritime Industry Symposium. Thank you, and God bless us all. Thank you so much, Administrator M. Pedrad, sir, for that very inspiring message for all of us and our friends in the maritime industry. Moving on, we will have more video message as a show of support to our event. From our honorable guest speaker, from the Merino Party List Representative Honorable Carlos Zandro Gonzalez, let us give him a big hand.
Magandang araw! Pagbati sa marina at sa buong maritime industry ngayong pagdiriwang ng National Maritime Week. Ikinalulugod ko na ako ay naimbitahan upang magbigay ng mensahe patungkol sa selebrasyon na ito. This year's theme, Sustainable Shipping for a Sustainable Planet, is fitting as we seek and work hard to have a safer and greener planet for the next generation. May this occasion be an avenue for us to learn more about the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals and how to apply these in the context of the Philippine maritime industry. Asahan niyo po ang patuloy na suporta ng Marino Party List sa anumang bagay na magbibigay ginhawa sa buhay ng ating mga seafarers at ng kanilang pamilya. Salamat at mag-ingat po tayong lahat. Thank you so much, Congressman Zandro Gonzalez, sir. So before we proceed, we would like to extend our sincerest gratitude to our viewers via FB live stream. Ayan, nandyan po sila ngayon, kasama natin sila. And also our participants, MROs and stakeholders from Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao, who are also inside the meeting room. Maraming maraming salamat po that you can join us today. So in this part of the program, we in the marina would like to present to you video presentations of the agency, one in the updates regarding the country's maritime industry development plan or the MIDP, to be followed by an audio-visual presentation of the marina's steadfast efforts during the pandemic brought to us by COVID-19. Let's all watch this. Transforming the Philippines into a major maritime nation is now starting to become a reality. With the completion and the initial implementation of the 10-year Maritime Industry Development Plan, the Philippines is on its right track to global competitiveness. Now included in the Philippine Development Plan Midterm Update by the National Economic and Development Authority or NEDA, the MIDP will be the blueprint for all maritime industry-related activities for the next 10 years. The MIDP is a comprehensive long-term plan formulated for the country's maritime industry. Year 2019 Witness the initial implementation of the eight priority programs of the MIDP. In its bid to upgrade the domestic shipping in support of the Nautical Highway Development Program, 47 sea routes were identified and 103 ships were deployed. As a kickstart, the Maritime Industry Authority established a Philippine Registry for Recreational Boats for ships designed for tourism or recreational purposes to boost the local tourism industry and to create employment opportunities for our people. To serve as an alternative mode for moving people and cargoes by utilizing inland waterways and to address congestion in megacities, 11 areas have been identified for feasibility studies. Aware of the importance of modernizing the country's fishing fleet, the Philippine Fishing Vessels Rules and Regulations was adopted. A policy was likewise issued to enhance the competency of proficiency of the fishing vessel crew. Initial efforts were pursued as primary step to transform the Philippines into a global maritime hub for shipbuilding and seafarers. With the approval of the Philippine Maritime Strategy, with the re-election of the Philippines into the IMO Council and aggressive step to pursue ratification of various IMO instruments. Enhancing maritime safety and security plays a vital role in the stability of inter-island shipping trade. 
the marina has issued policies relating to recognized organizations, local classification societies, and phasing out of wooden hulled ships. Coordination on the provision for port facility and ship security to strengthen maritime security is being pursued vigorously. Sea transport for people and cargoes should be safe, secure, seamless, and convenient. Learning lessons from the huge impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. The marina has accelerated the automation of its frontline services nationwide. The integrated domestic shipping information system will make domestic shipping related applications to be online for all marina offices nationwide. It will be operational by October 2020. This blockchain-enabled automated certification management system is going through the required government process. It will be ready middle of 2021. The Marina Training Institute in Bacolod City has been set up. The voyage has finally commenced. We invite our partner agencies and private sector stakeholders to join the journey. For this is the only way for us to progress and sustain the gains of the maritime industry for our country, for our people, and for the future generation. Sa gitna ng krisis na kinakaharap ng buong mundo dala ng COVID-19 pandemic, nananatili pa rin na humahanap at gumagawa ng paraan ang national government upang masolusyonan ang mga problemang hatid nito sa ating bansa. Hindi lamang sa kalusugan ang naging target ng pandemyang ito, malaki rin ang naging epekto nito sa ekonomiya ng bansa. Dahil sa patuloy na pagtaas ng bilang ng mga kaso ng virus, matatanda ang dumaan sa iba't ibang level ng community quarantine ang Pilipinas at nagpapatuloy ito hanggang sa kasalukuyan. Ang Maritime Industry Authority o ang Marina ay pinagpapatuloy ang mandato nitong magsilbi at tumulong sa mga marino at iba pang mga maritime stakeholders. Kasama na rin dito ang pagpapanatili ng patuloy na paggalaw ng goods and services sa buong bansa. Nagpapatuloy pa rin ang work from home scheme sa ilang porsyento ng mga empleyado ng marina na apektado pa rin ng mga community protocols at paghinto ng iba't ibang transportasyon sa kanilang mga lugar. Ngunit hindi ito hadlang para gampanan ang kanilang mga trabaho at tungkulin. Sa ganitong paraan ay maiiwasan ang pagkalat ng virus sa mga opisina ng ahensya. Sa mga empleyado namang bahagi ng skeletal workforce, sinisiguro nilang sundin ang mga health protocols habang ginagampanan nila ang kanilang mga trabaho sa opisina. Sa kasalukuyan, bahagi rin ng mga effort ng marina ang paglabas ng mga advisory na makatutulong sa mga Pilipinong marino. Ilan rito ay ang one-year extension ng validity ng STCW certificates bilang temporary contingency measure laban sa COVID-19 pandemic at one-year extension ng coverage ng mga mag-e-expire na CVRS record books o SRBs at CVRS identification and record books o SIRBs. Nagtutuloy-tuloy rin ang pag-establish ng Philippine Green Lane nang sa gayon ay mapagpanatili ang mabilis at ligtas na biyahe ng mga marino. Kabilang na rito ang embarkation at crew change sa gitna ng pandemya. Naniniwala ang marina na sa pamamagitan ng mga extension ng certificate at seafarer books at pagpapanatili ng proseso ng crew change, magpapatuloy ang employment ng mga Pilipino marino. Nagpapatuloy rin ang pagmonitor at paggawa ng marina ng mga situational reports, kaugnay ng mga status ng passenger at cargo operations, nang sa gayon ay mapanatili ang transport ng essential goods sa buong bansa. Bilang bahagi ng patuloy na serbisyo publiko para sa mga maritime stakeholders, kabilang na mga marino, ship owners, operators, bukas pa rin ang Marina Contact Center para matugunan ang kanilang mga concern. Ang marina ay palaging handa sa anumang sitwasyon 
upang magpatupad ng mga kasalukuyang guidelines upang umayon at tumugma sa mga susunod pang sitwasyon sa bansa na ating kinakaharap. Para sa lahat ng mga marinong Pilipino at iba pang maritime frontliners na patuloy na nagseserbisyo sa gitna ng pandemya, saludo ang buong marina sa inyo. Ang ginagampanan ninyong tungkulin ay malaki ang nagiging ambag sa ekonomiya at sa buong mundo sa gitna ng krisis ng pangkalusugan. Maraming maraming salamat. Wow! Do- inspiring videos. Congratulations to Team Marina for all the success and projects during these trying times. And of course, for a very systematic and organized symposium, let's hear the house rules of our event to be given to us by Miss Geraldina Evangelista. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Miss Eva. This, our, this will be our house rules for the Maritime Industry Symposium. Next slide, please. All participants should always arrive on time, preferably a little early than the assigned time. Type your name on the chat box for attendance once you have entered the virtual meeting. All cameras of the participants are encouraged to be turned on. Observe proper lighting in your respective areas for a clear appearance in the video conference. All participants must mute their microphones unless recognized by the MC or moderator. Do not interrupt someone while they are speaking or asking a question. Questions shall not be entertained during presentations but may be raised through the chat box. All participants should wait to be recognized before turning your microphone on to avoid speaking simultaneously. Participants are advised to use the raise hand feature. Click the participants icon at the bottom center Zoom interface. Then the list of participants will be shown at the right, including the raise hand button below the list of participants. This will notify the MC or moderator so you can be authorized to speak. Treat the symposium like a face-to-face -face discussion. Remain engaged and avoid texting, multitasking, or sideline chatter in the course of the symposium. Always observe courtesy and mutual respect. For other related concerns, participants are requested to coordinate with the symposium sec secretariat through the chat box. Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, Ma'am Evangelista. So let us not forget all of our house rules so that we will have a very systematic and a very organized symposium. So for now, we will have a five-minute break before we introduce to you our moderator of the symposium for today. So please take this time to do necessary breaks so that we won't be interrupted in our series of talks later. We will be back at exactly 9.35 a.m.
seek and never shaken our hearts In heat or cold we'll keep on doing our parts Going to the seas is not just our job It's our way of life In our sailing we found our calling Yes, leaving home will never be not hard our loved ones' wishes will keep on going forward Never mind the pain of always being away from home As the favors will rise up to the challenge Cause when the road's about to stop We'll keep it running, we'll keep it turning We'll keep on sailing When the road's about to stop Got a day to reach, our prayers gone season Favoring winds from boots and to Albany Nothing is stopping me We we'll make it safe, all good with a PSC Alright, all good, everybody's in tune The days are short when everybody's a friend Nine months, ten months, easy More days, yes, more money Cause when the world's about to stop We'll keep it running, we'll keep it turning We'll keep on sailing We'll keep on sailing when the world's about to stop We'll keep it running, we'll keep it turning We'll keep on sailing when the world's about to stop We'll keep it running, we'll keep it turning We'll keep on There you have it. Those are our entries for the songwriting contest. Musikalikha ng ating mga marino. Ayan. So with no further ado, let me introduce to you our day one moderator, Attorney Loreto Zara from the Marina STCWO. Let's give him a big hand. Thank you very much, Ms. Eva. The first leg in our three-day symposium, as as earlier said by our administrator, relates to the initiatives, innovations, and investments to sustain the course of the country's maritime industry. This early, we would like to express our appreciation to our resource speakers for favorably responding to our requests to share their invaluable insights on the matter, especially as we all continue to adopt to the new normal conditions of the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. Guided by the team of this year's National Maritime Week celebration on working together, this industry symposium is an appropriate means through which the government and private stakeholders can strengthen collaborative efforts for us to bounce back from the inevitable impacts of the pandemic. We would be very pleased to know more on how the industry can better move forward and in what areas can the government intervene to provide the necessary assistance. May we also be guided on the goal of realizing sustainability, which is important for an industry indispensable as ours, the maritime, upon which global trade and social economic development highly depend. Setting long-term goals for the industry, as in our 10-year Maritime Industry Development Plan, MIDP, with eight priority programs, would enable us to ensure sailing smoothly even amidst turbulent waters in the years to come. The first presentation for today will be made by no less than our administrator, the administrator of the Maritime Industry Authority. Let's all give our hands and ears again to our administrator, Vice Admiral Robert A. M. Pedrad. Sir.
Magandang umaga ulit sa ating lahat. Um, as the first presenter for this day, uh, let me um, express again a gratitude for uh, Team Marina for coming up with this presentation. And uh, I would like to uh, request uh, your time. 15 minutes lang po ito. Uh, we will discuss uh, Marina Initiatives, Innovation and Investment to sustain the course of the Philippine maritime industry despite the pandemic that we are all uh, suffering right now. In the presentation, we will be discussing three main points. Marina initiatives uh, uh, coming from the Marina Industry Development Plan. What are the innovations uh, in response to the pandemic? And the priorities of uh, my administration, my being the administrator, until I step down on July 11, 2022. Since the completion of the 10-year Maritime Industry Development Plan in late 2018, thanks to uh, the former Administrator uh, General Guerrero and uh, the uh, former OIC uh, Admiral Pinson for uh, coming up with this uh, Maritime Industry Development Plan in collaboration with the maritime uh, stakeholders. As you may well be aware of it, it was in third quarter of 2019 that the Marina was able to secure the NEDA Infra Committee approval of the Maritime Industry Development Plan. And awaiting for the formal approval of the president through the NEDA board where the president sits as the NEDA as a chairperson. The MIDP is an industry plan and the marina is but one of its implementing agencies. Although all of MIDP programs are led by marina, the effective implementation of this plan depends on the collaboration between various stakeholders from the government and from the private sectors. Your ac you access the copy of um, you can access the copy of the MIDP through the marina website. In the area of good governments, the Marina achieved the PGS compliant status in November 2019 and has commenced the preparation for the proficiency revalida, which is targeted in 2021. It is the Marina's noble pursuit to continue to raise the bar as it's, it, it modernizes its organization together with the stakeholders being partners in governance, governance reform. Meanwhile, to further ease the conduct of business and provide speedy service, we have further decentralized the seafarers related processes to 10 marina regional offices and two extension offices across the country. In Metro Manila, we have processing centers at SM City Manila and at PITX. As for the continuing compliance with the IMO STCW convention, the marina continues to improve its quality systems to ensure that the Philippines remain in the white list. Being in the list demonstrates full and complete effect to the relevant provisions of the STCW convention. This is not only maintain this is this not only maintains the Philippines strong position in the international maritime community but also secures the employment of thousands of Filipino seafarers on board internationally flagged vessels. It's been said, the mother of invention is necessity. Driven by the current situation of pandemic, the Marina adopted some innovations and initiate measures in order to continue to operate and deliver speedy services uh, to our maritime stakeholders as presented in the following or in succeeding slides. Policy on blended learning for maritime training institution. On ensuring safety of ships operations during the pandemic, the Marina likewise the issued the policy on the introduction of the remote survey inspection of ships to reduce risk reduce physical face-to-face -face surveys on board ships and advance digital capabilities on survey and inspection of ships. 
On the OFW seafarers travel, disembarkation and crew change, the marina is instrumental in the completion and submission to the IMO, the Philippine guidelines for the establishment of the Philippine Green Lane. Formulated through an interagency effort, said guidelines aims to facilitate the speedy safe travel of seafarers, including their safe and swift disembarkation and crew change during the pandemic. This is also the Philippines' response to IMO recommendation for safe ship crew changes. In relation to this, Marina has also issued Marina Advisory 2020-60 and 61, which highlights the various crew change protocol from IMO member states and said protocols serve as a guide for licensed manning agencies, ship owners, ship operators, and other concerned entities in the Philippine maritime sector in the conduct of crew change in the country during the pandemic. In addition, the Marina proposal to the ITF on the declaration of seafarers, shipyard workers, and LMA staffs as key workers. This proposal was approved by the IATF in its resolution number 38, dated 22 May 2020. Following the establishment of the Philippine Grain Lane, the marina with guidance, with the guidance of the Department of Transportation is actively promoting the Philippines as the world's new crew change hub. This initiative is welcomed in view of these practical benefits to OFW seafarers who comprise one out of four of the total number of seafarers manning the world fleets. The Marina has recently issued the details and procedures and health and safety protocols for the repatriation of the conduct of crew chains in authorized domestic and international ports in the country. On enhancing our assistance desk, the Marina together with the PPA and the Philippine Coast Guard and other agencies established an integrated assistance center called the Marina Malasakit Help Desk, which is considered as one of uh, the venue in looking into the concerns of our seafarers who are coming home. The Marina Malasakit Help Desk receive or handle seaport related inquiries and complaints provided travel-related assistance to our seafarers. Meanwhile, as part of the collaboration of Marina in the HDI program, Hatid Tulung, or Hatid Tulung Initiative program of the government, the Marina is instrumental in ensuring the availability of ships that transported a total of 3,827 LSIs from, during the month of July. The Marina likewise assisted the facilitation of rural transfers of 103 buses bound for regions 10, 11, and 13. The safe and secure transportation of the above mentioned LSIs is collective efforts between the Marina, the PCG, the PPA, the LGUs, and our domestic shipper owners or shipping owners. And the last in our list so far is the daily monitoring of operations of cargo ships services <clears throat> as a way of ensuring the unhampered movement of basic commodities and medical supplies in the domestic trade. Moving on to uh, the 10 point agenda under my administration, which we will be pursuing, uh, which will be the guide of the men and women of Marina in our pursuit of a progressive maritime industry. The first is the creation of additional position. The first is to strengthen the Marina organization for efficiency. Uh, we are coming up with a, a structural, a new structural organization for Marina in line in, in collaboration with the Development Academy of the Philippines and hope that we will be coming up with uh, the right organization that will serve the maritime industry. This will strengthen the various uh, regional offices of, Marita, of Marina so that we can provide 
speedy services, not only in Manila, but in the various areas of our country. Next slide. The next in the 10 point agenda is to capacitate personnel and enhance the morale and welfare of our employees. I cannot argue that our the personnel of Marina are very, uh, has the right credentials in um, providing services in Marina. And we need, but we need to train them. In fact, four of our personnel is going abroad to do training, to capacitate them, and to make them more competent in performing their mandates, duties, and responsibilities. We will also continue to observe health protocols, protocols in the performance of duties amidst the pandemic. Kasi alam nyo, pag nagkasakit yung frontliners natin, there is no other option but to shut down our offices, which um, caters to the requirements of uh, various stakeholders more importantly, the seafarers. And so we came up with advisory that um, a strict observance of health protocols in order not to inflict or to spread the virus to the, to the employees of our team and to the seafarers as well. Next. Next slide, please. Winning the trust and confidence of our stakeholders require us to implement efficient system and effective processes. This is one way to eradicate perceived corruption uh, within and outside of the industry. This is a very specific instruction of the president to me when I assume as the marina administrator. And the only way to uh, limit or to eradicate graft and corruption is to, to come up with a speedy service to all our stakeholders, and that we are going to do. The other one is to strengthen policies and procedures to uh, ensure good governance, um, not only in the maritime higher education institution, the training centers, uh, the assessment centers, but in all aspects of the maritime industry. It is the new normal. Uh, hindi naman mawawala na itong uh, COVID-19. If, if, if mawala man, we will continue to uh, do probably social distancing to protect us from the virus. And, uh, and one way to protect our stakeholders and the marina employees is to maximize digitalization to speed up processes. Um, soon, we will be coming up with online services uh, to all stakeholders and even online payments. So you don't need to come to Marina anymore to um, uh, get your statutory certificates. Uh, we will be sending the statutory, statutory certificates through courier uh, system. So um, when we limit the engagement between our personnel and the stakeholders, it means that our systems are efficient. And um, at least we will uh, hopefully be able to do that uh, by next year or within the year if that's possible. Next. Of course, uh, you know the issues on EMSA. Uh, this is what we are doing in Marina. We act this with urgency. We created a task force to look into the, the findings of EMSA. Uh, Gustuko, uh, our objective is to ensure the favorable uh, you know, um, support of the European countries to our seafarers. And we will do just that. We are doing a um, uh, stride right now, and dami na rin namin nagagawa. Though the EMSA findings has not been released by the EMSA auditors, but uh, when, when this is released, we are ready to um, uh, address uh, whatever findings uh, being put by the EMSA audit. And of course, we will elevate compliance. Uh, can you? Compliance with the STCW convention. Kailangan natin itong uh, ano, ipagpatuloy and sustains, sustain so that uh, our uh, seafarers will always be the, the seafarers of choice of various uh, principles around the world. 
And the last one is we will continue to prepare for the IMO state audit scheme. Uh, we are supposed to be inspected in 2021, but because of the pandemic, it was moved to uh, next, uh, in 2022. Uh, though I will not be the administrator that time, we will still pursue and continue to aggressively um, uh, prepare for the uh, conduct of the audit in 2021. And then, of course, we will uh, pursue with BICOR the eight priority programs of the MIDP. That's why we are meeting today on a three-day symposium uh, to, to uh, align our uh, sale or to adjust our sales because of the pandemic on how we come up with strategic uh, plans on how to pursue the eight priority programs of the MIDP. And we can only do this uh, in collaboration with government and private sectors. So these are the 10 um, guidance that I put in place for uh, the Maritime Industry Authority um, to uh, be guided upon. So ladies and gentlemen, there is much more work ahead of us. In addition to the aforementioned priorities, we are working doubly hard to lobby with Congress various legislative measures that would enable the agency to effectively and efficiently navigate and propel the maritime industry to greater frontiers for its fuller development. The next slides in the next slides are the agency list of priority bills of legis or legislative agenda necessary to push key priorities that requires congressional act. We enjoin our stakeholders to help us in following us and get the speed approval of these draft bills in Congress. Next. Next, please. So there you are, our legislative agendas uh, that are pending in uh, Congress. So ladies and gentlemen, I once again urge everyone that we work together in the spirit of Benihan as we move full speed ahead, ahead uh, in our pursuit of a Philippine progressive maritime industry. Raming salamat for listening. Gandang hapo, gandang umaga sa atin. Thank you very much, sir, Administrator. Definitely 225 of us in the meeting room and many more those watching on Facebook will have their own queries on the different insights, initiatives, innovations, and of course, the priority that our administrator has discussed. Although as mentioned this early, I mean, a while ago by Ms. Eva and Ms. Geraldina on her house rule, we encourage everyone for you to have your questions in the chat box so that we can recognize them and that they may be addressed respectively later. On to the next presentation. Our second resource speaker has had a long list of accomplishments in not only empowering women in the industry, but also advocating for its continuous improvement. Indefatigable is but one of the many qualities attached to her name. Without further ado, let's all welcome the president of the Women in Maritime Philippines, Wima Phil, and the chairperson of the Movement for Maritime Philippines, MMP, no other than Ms. Merle Jimenez San Pedro. Ma'am? Yeah, good morning, uh, everyone. Um, good morning, Mr. Administrator, uh, Sir Bob, uh, and uh, of course, to the Marina team that has done a good job. Um, even 
uh, during this pandemic times. Um, well, on behalf of uh, the women in Maritime Philippines, uh, I see that we have, uh, of course, we have Marina uh, chapter, uh, sub-chapter, and, uh, and also from other uh, agencies like Philippine Coast Guard, Philippine National PMP Maritime Group, uh, PPA, and of course, our chapters all over the country. Magandang umaga po sa inyo lahat. Um, magandang mana mo. Uh, ngayon po, it's, it's National Maritime Week. And just like, uh, you know, very typical of the Filipinos, we uh, always extend our celebration. So now we have mana mo. It's the month of Archipelagic and Nation Awareness Month as declared by President Duterte in his uh, uh, proclamation uh, number 316. Um, well, as you can see, uh, well, I, I am uh, specifically uh, grateful as well. I'd like to uh, mention our, our friend here, Director Mon, who's chairing the, uh, Mon Hernandez, who's chairing the celebration for this week, <clears throat> because uh, for uh, bringing in the gender lens, for bringing in women in this celebration, uh, in this uh, series of activities, after all, yes, in 2017, we are 49.6 in our population, uh, the women uh, all over the world. So when we speak of development, there's never, um, never can we speak of complete development without participation of women. And at this time, as you can see, my presentation is, uh, uh, I, I know we are given only limited time and uh, the administrator, I know, wants to have more time for um, the discussion. Uh, and so uh, we are um, carrying the theme of working together for a sustainable maritime Philippines from a gender lens. Next slide, please. Um, of course, we cannot do away with uh, speaking of all of this, the initiatives of women in maritime Philippines, uh, with what we are doing, uh, the challenges that we face, uh, without the context of this uh, COVID-19 it has its own power, as you can see. Next slide, please. <clears throat> uh, it has become destructive and disruptive, uh, how it has impacted people and society. And uh, economists even say that the impact of this pandemic will run, sadly, three to five years. It will slow down economic activities. And uh, we hope uh, there will be a much, uh, much uh, lesser years so that we can work on um, the uh, recovery program for the country. Um, yes, it's destructive, lives have been lost and disruptive as well. Um, next please. Uh, globally, there are 30 million and more uh, affecting people across the ages, the genders and the borders. And even according to the UN women, uh, from health to, econo to economy, security to social protection, the impacts of the COVID-19 are exacerbated for women, girls, due to their sex. Next slide, please. And this, uh, despite the disruption of the global economy, we all know that among those uh, impacted by this uh, pandemic is, of course, uh, schools, uh, the education sector, the labor markets. Uh, <clears throat> but it has also paved the way for societal change and opportunities for change. And uh, we all know how this will impact uh, women seafarers. Definitely, women seafarers now face more limited opportunities uh, because of what is happening in the global market. Next slide, please. <clears throat> uh, societies have been triggered by the pandemic to rethink, however, existing behaviors, the norms and policies surrounding public health, education, labor, and social development programs. And um, um, this is a crisis. In every crisis, there is also an opportunity that faces us. And this, I think, being resilient, Filipinos like us being resilient, uh, have always a way to go through all these hardships. Next slide, please. Of course, we face the problem of unemployment with the bigger bulk of labor. Uh, we all know what has happened to the hospitality, tourism, retail, including, of course, the cruise. Um, some of the industries which are hardest hit by the pandemic. Again, we are speaking of 
what is um, coming now and being faced by uh, our seafar our seafarers and more so with the women seafarers because of limited opportunities. Next slide, please. <clears throat> Next slide, please. Um, yes, there is women. There are women exiting the workforce. We all know that uh, all of us, uh, mothers, sisters, uh, the, the children, uh, the uncertainties about school reopening and fears of the contagion actually have led women to exit the labor force for a prolonged period of time. And this impacts on long-term costs to their careers. I've spoken to some of, of uh, our graduates, our cadets, and some of our seafarer officers. Um, good for them who are still on board, but uh, they are facing, of course, the problem of uh, the transit uh, because of the, uh, the restrictions in the in in uh, many of the borders or ports next please <clears throat> access to education women usually carry the highest burden of housework and bearing most of the pandemic epidemic related costs triggered by school closures and transition to the online learning which is really a big challenge next please and as a result women are employed in the social services hospitality tourism crews and retail next please Okay, as I provide uh, everybody with the, uh, with the scenario, uh, we, we, we felt that this is very important uh, that, uh, to provide everybody with the, uh, with the um, uh, perspective, um, with these realities that face us with this pandemic. And of course, we all know that we can weather all of this. So uh, I now go to my second portion, which is let, let's let's um, let's um, um, have a little background of Wima Phil of Wima of uh, Wima Asia. Uh, the women. Uh, can we go back to the other slide just before this? Okay. So uh, who we are? We were established in two thousand seven with the support of the IMO to promote participation, greater participation, and integration of women in the maritime industry. Um, we're composed of women from shipping, maritime education and training, ports, seafarers, wives of seafarers, students, coastal communities. And as I mentioned earlier, we have chapters from NCR, Western Visayas, Central and Eastern Visayas, Bicol, Davao, and even Northern Mindanao. Next slide, please. <clears throat> uh, we, are, um, we are inspired by um, the Sustainable Development Goals. We, we started off with the MDGs, with the Millennial Development Goals, um, and now it has shifted, um, UN has shifted to the SDGs, and we are actually um, uh, on the fifth, working on the fifth goal, which is on, uh, on the gender equality, and also the life below water. Next slide. Um, women in Maritime Philippines is also stands as the Secretariat of uh, Women Asia, uh, whose vision, as you see here, is uh, to empower Asian women as leaders in the maritime industry. Um, <clears throat> it, there's regional integration, support, and cooperation of women in national maritime associations, including that's why we're very relevant and very much connected to Marina because of the issues of maritime safety, security environmental protection and trading throughout Asia. Next, please. Um, so as you can see, we are focused on uh, SDG 5 and SDG 14. Uh, but of course, even if you speak of life below water, anything that is above water, like the ships, are very much part of our advocacy. So that goes with the safety and security, not just of properties, the ships, but more so is the lives of uh, those who run the ships. <clears throat> Next slide, please. Um, we are a strategic partner of IMO with these two pronged goals. Next slide, please. <clears throat> uh, our major initiatives are uh, more on the capacity building, education awareness, and if you ask us, because one of the uh, indicated 
uh, areas in the in the topic is um, that of investments. Jan po ay wala po kaming <laughs> wala po kaming pwedeng maibigay sa investments biyang an NGO, but definitely this uh, Wema Phil and Wema Asia it's a <clears throat> it's a both a co collaborative uh, effort of the private sector and also the public, the, the government. Uh, this is where we contribute a lot in terms of our capacity building for women and even promotion of education and awareness. Next slide, please. <coughs> uh, our group councils um, are, uh, come from Philippines. Of course, we have the Wema Asia. Timor Leste, Korea, Mongolia, Myanmar, Malaysia, Lao, Maldives, Pakistan, and <clears throat> Cambodia. Next slide, please. So this is what we we, we do. Um, many of the activities that involve, of course, our uh, students, women, cadets in um, the different schools. Our, um, next slide, please. <clears throat> okay. So uh, I just like to go through the, the what Wema Asia also uh, does. Um, we focus, of course, on uh, enhancing women uh, awareness among women and girls on the many opportunities that are open in the maritime industry through the establishment of national Wemas and individual members campaign for wider acceptance of women engagement. Um, uh, we would like we, we are also promoting the contribution of women bringing about realization of sustainable and inclusive participation of the population in the maritime industry and this is very important <clears throat> and we're very happy that uh, with the we have already uh, several um, uh, exchanges with the good administrator here who's very much committed to pushing for a marina that is strong in um, in, um, in uh, governance, um, we are, of course, part of our uh, agenda is on pushing for gender neutral policies and programs. Next slide, please. <clears throat> okay, so you can see uh, this is um, promoting the IMO uh, call for integration of women in the maritime sector through the delivery of various activities under the Integrated Technical Cooperation Program. And um, yes, it's, it's all, the, all the efforts um, are leading to, the, and to enhancing the harmonized management of safe, secure, and efficient shipping on clean seas. Next slide, please. <clears throat> now, uh, this is rather, um, yeah. I hope you can see, you can read through it, but I'll just go very quickly uh, on the initiatives of Women Asia, of which uh, Women feel. And we're happy, by the way, I'd like to mention that uh, finally, after some years, uh, Administrator Bob here, soon we will have our our um, our the dream fulfilled of uh, being housed. Um, as part of the commitment to IMO of uh, the uh, the uh, marina uh, to to house the Secretariat of Women Asia in uh, in uh, the marina building, <clears throat> um, we work for equal access and protection of women at all levels of maritime education, training, and research, and strengthen the national mechanisms for the employment of women. Uh, support the entry of women, of course, is very important, especially with the gender neutral engagement policies, be it in the management, operational, or even technical levels of employment. Um, <clears throat> we, we have been encouraging our women seafarers also to get to uh, even the maritime administration. We understand that there's a lot of openings in Marina, so uh, this is one way of involving our uh, those who are not yet on board, waiting to go on board, but definitely they've been schooled um, under the maritime programs that we offer uh, with the, the uh, higher educational institutions. Um, um, okay, number four, uh, it's also very important for us the development and funding of training modalities for women managers, including the on the job attachments with national maritime administra administrations to accelerate the transfer of knowledge and tapping women, 
female of office officials to gain practical experience in technical as well as administration processes. Next slide, please. So introduce mentorship programs with the maritime sector, a cost neutral mechanism for encouraging. This is one big problem with, uh, with, uh, with the women's affairs on the retention and development of women officials uh, at the entry level and middle management. So um, next slide, please. Okay, so I think basically these are the same. Um, there is a mention here of the climate action and the network platform uh, to be established for women national chapters in a knowledge hub and the build support mechanisms for gender empowerment. Next slide, please. <clears throat> a platform for women uh, in maritime to share their perspectives and current issues, of course, on environment protection, maritime safety and security, ocean governance, and maritime administration. Uh, can, can we proceed to the next slide, please? Okay, so this is also uh, um, about Wemafil. I will not go through it. It's similar. It's how we also um, that are reflected in Wema Asia. Next slide, please. So the initiatives are basically um, focused on capacity building, uh, stakeholder roles in promoting SDGs. And uh, hence, this is where we have also um, sought participation in, uh, in the different committees, in the different, uh, in the different fora. Uh, in uh, the different government agencies, specifically with Marina, um, so that we are also get to be engaged and we are consulted when it comes to policy making. Um, policy making, partnership development. Next slide, please. Communication and visibility. Um, this is all for the SDGs uh, to utilize the social network and the media's platform, and also for sustainability. Next slide, please. Okay, so these are our banner programs, she to see Wima on Watch, Marine and Environmental Protection. And this is what uh, across the niche, across the country right now, as we speak, there are activities being conducted by the different chapters from the NCR, from uh, uh, Western Visayas uh, chapter, from Central and Eastern Visayas, from Bicol, uh, Bicol region from Davao and even from Northern Mindanao. Yes. Um, next, please. Okay, so I will just go through that. These are the pictures that I have included in our presentation. Please, we will just show through all this list of value programs. Uh, next, please. Okay, so these are what are being done by our members from across. Uh, the different chapters. Next, please. Next, please. Next slide. Okay. I think be, as, as uh, I approach now my closing minutes, let me now put the MIDP in the gender lens. I think this is where uh, would be a good input for uh, the marina um, as we approach this from the gender perspective. So the program number two, we have, I think, eight programs under the MIDP. For number two, it's for shipping services for maritime tourism. So it's important that we get to integrate, um, we get to integrate uh, um, women here. The development of a coastal and inland waterways transport system. Um, okay, so I get my... Okay, and then the participation of women in the design, operations, and maintenance of boats and ports. Uh, I know that uh, Director Mon has also mentioned that um, has provided a lot of support for uh, gender and development, even when it comes to shipbuilding and ship repair, and we're happy to hear that. Uh, number five program is on the development of a global uh, maritime hub. So we are looking forward to the provision of equal opportunities in the establishment of an eco-industrial maritime park. Um, women marine surveyors, technical superintendents, 
managers of ancillary industries, including even shipyard skilled workers. Why not? Uh, this, there are a lot of opportunities out there and all we have to do are, is actually talk women. Next slide, please. Uh, from World Maritime Education and Training, of course, we, we, are, we, we are calling consistently for the integration of women, not only in seafaring, in, uh, we have uh, ancillary uh, services, we have ports, we have um, shipbuilding and ship repair, we have uh, everything, not just uh, as seafarers, and not just, of course, in overseas, but in domestic. This is what we need, especially at this time of the pandemic. We push for a very strong domestic shipping because this is where we will get support for uh, those women who are sidelined, not only women, but even men, uh, uh, seafarers. So number eight is the establishment of Maritime Innovation and Knowledge Center. Again, it's the call is to engage women in STEM. What is STEM? It's science, technology, and math. So uh, science, technology, and, in, and uh, innovations. Why not? We have still long stereotyped women to just be in the housekeeping, to just be in, uh, in just to be, uh, to be um, in the kitchen. Why not design construction and repair of green ships, not just regular ships, but environment friendly ships. And of course, and this is what we have uh, actually uh, relate, relate to the IMO, we wish to have and we promote a strong research policy, research programs, uh, focus on having sex disaggregated data for policy making. Because without any of this, there will be no uh, meaningful, meaningful uh, programs that can be provided for women who need to be integrated in the maritime industry. Next slide, please. So as I close now, I'd like to, um, I'd like to um, just quote Kofi Annan, there is no tool for development more effective than the empowerment of women. So uh, with this, I, I, I wish to close our um, presentation for Women in Maritime Philippines. Um, and as I segue to the next speaker, resource speaker that we have, um, coming from the Movement for Maritime Philippines, of which uh, Wim of is also a convener uh, in this uh, MMP, in this movement. We share actually that long time dream, the dream to have a maritime industry that has ships, a dynamic maritime industry that has ships that are owned, built, manned by Filipinos, always for economic development of our own countrymen. Thank you very much at mabuhay po ang marina at sa ating po mga kasama ngayon sa ating nasiposyon. Thank you very much, Ma'am Marley. So those are really helpful insights, especially having the right perspective, the gender lens. And I think one of the reminders by our Sir Administrator a while ago is more on integration. So there is also this idea of integrating women participation in the eight priority programs, specifically programs two, three, five, even uh, eight of the MIDP and it's not only about seafaring. So there are other opportunities where we can provide uh, to our women, especially now that this pandemic has caused us not only the men, but also the women limited opportunities, if not resulting in their unemployment due to the fear of contagion and uncertainties. Marami pong salamat, ma'am. So we were able to get one, questions, one question here. So before we proceed to the next, the question comes from FVPC. So if I may read, has Marina Regional Offices considered operating during MGCQ so that seafarers that need to process their certificates won't have to travel to NCR or other Marina offices? Uh, I understand that in one of the audiovisual presentation, what and as presented by the administrator among the initiatives, undertaken by the marina is a shift to uh, online transactions of applications because the priority now is 
not to be not to be uh, affected directly affected or contracting the virus but also ensuring the safety of everyone both our stakeholders and the personnel of the marina so i hope that answers the question so if you have other questions please feel free to write them in the chat box of the zoom meeting and for those watching in the comment section of facebook live so let's now move on to the third presentation completing the roster of resource speakers for our first day here in the industry symposium is the convener of the mmp or the movement for maritime philippines an organization that proactively calls for boosting the role of the maritime industry in the economic development of the Philippines. He is also the president of the Integrated Seafarers of the Philippines, a non-stock and non-profit organization formed and established to promote the welfare of our Filipino seafarers. Let's all lend our ears to no less than Captain Jess Morales. Sir. Magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. Good morning, Vice Admiral Robert M. Pedrad. I am representing the Movement for Maritime Philippines, or MMP, in this presentation. But as president of the Integrated Seafarers of the Philippines, and being one of the convener of MMP, I will be presenting our joint initiatives, innovations, and investments to sustain the course of the maritime industry as aligned with the MIDP. But I beg your indulgence, wala po akong naihandang slides for better presentation because I was just given this task on behalf of our MMP chairperson, Merle San Pedro, a few days ago. Anyway, in 2017, the MMP participated in this series of roundtable discussions with the National Coast Guard County, together with other maritime stakeholders and government agencies to craft a vision for the maritime industry. A year later, after several RTDs, we are all in agreement and vision our maritime industry would be an integrated and global maritime industry with ships built, owned, operated, and manned by Filipinos that connects islands and people, create wealth, and generate jobs for economic progress and national security. This vision statement, together with various resolutions and action plans for the industry, were presented to the President during the National Marine Summit held on October 2019. Inspired with this vision, we boldly took the challenge and embarked in two business ventures that is aligned with the MIDP of Marina. One is in the domestic ferry service and the other in shipbuilding and ship repair. In 2018, we, ac we acquired ownership of an existing passenger ferry company in Cebu and upgraded the seaworthiness, seaworthiness of its vessel. We also added new locally built vessel to the fleet of seven flying the route between Cebu City and Mactan Island. The culture of safety of life at sea and protection of the marine environment was institutionalized and enhanced among its crew, mindful of a safer ship and cleaner environment. Although we have experienced delay in our expansion plan for the company due to the COVID-19 pandemic, we are positive that this is just a temporary setback that will not greatly affect our objective. With our commitment, we are determined to implement the plan when the shipping environment is back to normal or new normal. We believe that water transportation is the best solution to the perennial road traffic problem in densely populated cities like in Cebu and other urban areas in the country. And with the increasing population commuting daily, we think that ferry service or ferry business will continue to be profitable and sustainable. 
consistent with the maritime industry vision, we are now moving into shipbuilding and ship repair. The ISP cooperative, together with other interested stakeholders, are investing in ports and shipyard, shipyard business. We plan to build passenger boats, LCT or roller vessels that can be utilized for coastal trading and serve as training ship for Filipino maritime cadets. We have acquired a land area in Region 8 suitable for this purpose. There is already an ongoing site development that we envision to accommodate a private port, a shipyard, and a small fish port as our way of helping the community. This project is capital incentive, but considering the volume of ships that needs regular dry docking and repair, and volume of cargo movement in the, in the localities that requires port facilities, we calculated that this project is sustainable. The name of the company, if I may mention, is IMP Shipyard and Port Services, located at Alvera Lake. As soon as the site development is complete and all necessary equipment are available, we will immediately apply for accreditation as shipyard in Marina, hopefully next year. We are also looking forward for the support of Marina's MIDP to our initiative in order to ensure its success. These projects will surely generate employment for hundreds of Filipinos and maybe even expatriates and will be moving significant amount of goods that will amount to million in taxes for the government. Notable also is the fact that aside from these projects in the domestic shipping and shipbuilding, the MMP and ISP are also engaged in the reintegration programs for our returning seafarers. We look forward to work with Marina in the flagship program of establishing an innovation and knowledge center that will surely benefit not only our returning seafarers in particular, but also the maritime industry in general. We believe that sustainability of the maritime industry depends on the strength of cooperation among the stakeholders and the strength of partnership between the private and the public sector. Indeed, the private sector has money for investment and capacities to initiate projects and programs, but without fair and suitable government policies and support, investment in the maritime industry will just falter and may only go to waste. With the present leadership in Marina, we are confident that through this symposium, we can unlock the potential of the private sector and humbly call for Marina to have a policy and an efficient implementation of this policy in providing relief to investors and having reasonable regulatory costs, thereby enabling us to sufficiently recoup our investments and at the same time, encouraging us to expand our business. We can then truly say that we are working together as one for sustainable maritime Philippines. Maraming salamat po at muli magandang umaga sa ating lahat. Maraming salamat din po, Captain Morales. So, while you're presenting, we would also like to share to everyone a message of appreciation from Miss. Dehin Miran, thank you very much. Very timely topic because there is now an increase of enrollment for female cadets. Maraming salamat po, Ms. Miran. So, sir, for the presentation of Captain Morales, I think one of the important insights taken is for the country to have ships built, owned, and operated by Filipinos. So definitely a long-term goal 
which we should all be looking forward to. And there's also this major shift of focus from shipping to shipbuilding, which uh, would require so much of capital. Of course, the welfare of our returning seafarers is but a particular or specific concern, which will later contribute to the sustainability of our industry. We also took note, sir, the need for a policy to provide relief to our investors in order for our investors to recoup their operating costs and thereby expand businesses. If you have other questions for our participants and those watching on Facebook Live, please do so by giving them in the chat box of the meeting room as well as giving comments in our Facebook Live link. So any other questions from our participants? We had several insights. So again, for the presentations today covering the entire maritime industry, we are guided by the team of working together that despite this pandemic, as our administrator mentioned, we should align all our sales despite the fears of this pandemic. We have here in the chat, in the chat box, yes, Ma'am Carmela, question for Captain Morales Sana. Ano po yun, Ma'am Carmela? You may... Ma'am Carmela? Carmela Velar of the Manila Times. Patanong po kay Captain Morales. How much yung initial investments sa project that he was mentioning earlier? And paulit ang name ng private company doing this? Captain? Yes. Uh, alam nyo po, ang, uh, ang, ang tinatanong nyo po ba ay yung sa IMP Shipyard and Port Services? Yes daw po, Captain. Well, uh, medyo malaki ang investment dito. Maybe uh, initially we are invested more than more than 100 million. Mm -hmm. Does that answer po the question, Ma'am Carmela? And I think, Captain, the other question is, is it in dollars, pesos po ba, and the name of the private company? Uh, in peso, in peso po. Yes, po. But, but uh, sure, the, the, the uh, investment will increase soon as we uh, uh, procure the necessary equipments for uh, Class C or Class B uh, uh, shipyard. Yes, yun lang po kap. Any other question from our participants? While waiting for some of the questions, we all would, like, so would also like to relay this announcement from Ms. Corazon Claudio. An invitation on the MAP SysDev Development Committee and Partners' special free Zoom webinar this coming Friday, 12 to 3 p.m. It's about moving forward with our mana towards a blue economy. So... Do we have other questions in our presentations for today? Okay, I think Ms. Carmela is, will also have another question. Po. Yes, po, Ma'am Carmela. Um, okay, thank you, Ma'am Carmela. I think Ma'am Carmela is asking po the response of her dear administrator doon po sa project daw po ni Captain Morales on uh, the need for capital for shipbuilding, sir. Yes, of course, uh, we need to um, develop our shipbuilding ship repair capabilities. And I'm happy that I believe uh, Captain Morales will be opening an, another shipyard in, in, the Visaya, in the Visayas area. And we will come uh, uh, be investors to uh, invest on shipbuilding, ship repair capability. 
uh, we're looking also forward for the opening of uh, the the reopening of the HHIC, a Korean company shipyard uh, that was shut down last year uh, by a U.S. company called Cerberus. Uh, I hope this will open this year. And yes, kailangan natin palakasin ng ating industriya para ang mga ating domestic shippers will not uh, import uh, ships from the other countries. Um, kaya nga, isang programa natin is to uh, uh, restore the uh, steel manufacturing company or uh, capability of our countries. Kasi if we build ships, uh, kaya nahirapan ng ating shipbuilders are because the raw materials are very expensive. We need to import them. So we need to um, you know, uh, modernize our capabilities para lalong uh, gumanda yung ating industry as far as shipbuilding. Um, we will, meron ding uh, nirelease yung Congress. We will be supporting also the, the shipbuilding, uh, ship repair um, you know, industry. Uh, we will allocate funds um, for them to uh, elevate their plight in the ongoing pandemic. So we are very supportive to um, uh, this investment uh, of uh, Captain Morales. Thank you. Thank you for that question. I hope I answered you. Thank you very much, sir. Okay. So I think it also addresses one of the uh, recommendations from Captain Morales a while ago of having a policy to provide relief to our investors. So nasa Congress na na po, sir. So hopefully, it will also lead us to uh, more assistance and necessary government intervention that despite this pandemic, we'll be able to move forward with our plans. So, other participants are still encouraged to give their questions to, those, to the topics presented today. So again, just a recap, our administrator of the marina was able to provide us the different initiatives and innovations undertaken by the marina in response to the pandemic as well as his standpoint agenda. And our second resource speaker, Ms. Marlene Jimenez and Pedro, the win of Phil, was able to provide us or even enlighten us on the right perspective in order to provide gender neutral appreciation of what would or what should our maritime industry be. And lastly, the presentation of Captain Morales, Movement for Maritime Philippines. Um, we also have here now a question from Sir Eloy. Uh, if I may read, Sir Eloy of Seaway Magazine. Good AM to all. I'm wondering why there's only little attention, little mention in the MIDP of development of ship management business in the country, which is the logical next step after emerging as the world's manning capital. Thank you for the question, Sir Eloy. So, any reaction po or response to the question of Sir Eloy? So it's all about development of ship management business in the Philippines. Um, yes, sir. I can respond to that if there are members of the Marina team who were uh, part of um, developing the MIDP can answer later on. Uh, I think uh, that's the reason why we are uh, having this symposium so that we can adjust or we can set, adjust the set, the sail, if we are missing the, uh, our uh, voyage on, on how to improve the maritime industry development plan. Uh, if uh, the ship building, ship repair has not been uh, a major component of the MIDP, then we will look into, into this. Kailangan talaga natin palakasin ang ating ship building, ship repair. Although we are number six uh, in, in the world, pero yung Karamihan ng shipbuilding natin are uh, from the other countries. We have uh, two uh, foreign shipbuilding in Cebu. Yung Japanese and one is Austal. And in uh, in in Subic, uh, marami pa rin uh, foreign uh, shipbuilding keep, uh, ano, uh, owned by foreign uh, investors. Uh, yes, uh, we will uh, certainly look into this. Um, Unless there are any comments from the members of the team marina who crafted the MIDP. Mon, uh, Mon uh, maybe? In, in, uh, Engineer Mon Hernandez? Yes, sir.
sir, regarding the um, uh, question on uh, ship management, uh, actually that is part of um, MIDP program number five, um, uh, which we actually uh, uh, attracting uh, ship owners to own uh, own um, ships, no? Instead of you know. Um, uh, Airboat charter ships. So uh, we want our uh, Filipino ship owners um, have uh, uh, ships po. So uh, owned ships. So yan po yung ating, uh, that's why we are um, uh, promoting our ship registry that is part of the um, uh, developments also under program five of the uh, maritime industry development plan. Um, well, of course, it's part also that we are also developing ship management. Uh, ship management um, have uh, part of, of that program also, uh, MIDP program five. And also, sir, uh, we are modernizing our ports. That's why uh, part of the um, program five of the MIDP is to uh, establish also a uh, bunkering hub or a bunkering terminal. In, in the Philippines, which is part of the, um, which is part of that program. And uh, we are also um, establishing, we, we would like, we are proposing also to establish a maritime hub or um, a maritime industrial park, uh, which will uh, locate all um, ancillary industry aside from uh, shipbuilding and ship repair facility in that hub. We will also encourage uh, foreign investors to, and local investors also to locate in this um, industrial, maritime industrial part um, to uh, uh, be the logistic center for maritime industry. So we'll, we'll, we'll probably establish there also the uh, steel industry and all ancillary industry to uh, shipbuilding, ship repair, such as manufacturers of, um, engines, uh, spare parts, which are commonly used by our ships. And also we'll be um, locating also their uh, training centers and service centers also for our ships. So yun po, ang uh, kabubu kabuuan po noong uh, maritime industrial uh, park or hub. Thank you very much, Sir Juan. Director Hernandez. I hope that answers the question of Sir Eloy. So as mentioned in our chat box, for those who want to still give their questions, just make use of the raise hand button here in our Zoom meeting. We have here a question directed to our administrator. A question for the administrator under plan to give assistance to the industry in this time of the pandemic. Shipping for an, for an archipelagic nation is vital for sustained operation especially in these challenging times, a recovery plan specifically. May we request the user using the name iPad to uh, specify his or her name, please? And if the administrator would like to respond to the question. Salamat po. Uh, sir, you're muted po, sir. Thank you, sir. Meron tayong uh, economic stimulus uh, package that will be given out to the maritime industry on uh, uh, domestic shipping, uh, shipbuilding, um, and even our seafarers. Um, example, part of the plan is that um, yung susunod na mga RT-PCR testing ng ating seafarers, we're going to appropriate fund to... Uh, for them to have their RT-PCR test for free. So ito yung mga programa that we are uh, uh, helping out to our industry. Uh, the PPA and also have plans to um, alleviate yung uh, plight ng ating mga ship, uh, ship owners, uh, like uh, reducing, uh, so marami, uh, and we will be, Pwede namin i-present sa inyo, uh, the, the DOTR is uh, coming up with packages on all maritime sectors. Um, we are still uh, in the final uh, uh, preparation of this one, 
once makuha namin ito ay 50% namin sa uh, domestic shipping, sa shipbuilding, shipbuilding uh, or, or to the maritime industry. But there are um, packages, so economic stimulus packages. Uh, but aside from that, yung pinag-uusapan natin ngayon, sana makakaroon tayo ng uh, magandang uh, strategic plans from coming from you and we will review it and uh, and uh, we will work a uh, pag, pag um, craft natin so that we can help uh, the industry and uh, ask the help from uh, our uh, political leaders on how to alleviate our uh, maritime industry from the pandemics. Uh, thank you. Thank you, sir. The, I hope that answers put the question si Ma'am Arlene Romero from Wimma Field. We also have this question from Facebook. If we may request po, Ma'am Marlene, I think it's about women seafarers from Dr. Geneva Eler. Good morning. Any plans for women seafarers who were repatriated? I'm sure many of them are suffering now. Um, may we ask po a response from Ma'am Marlene? Yeah, okay. Uh, well, on, <clears throat> yeah, thank you uh, for, for that question. But <clears throat> um, I think the magnitude of the problem, yes, we are extending to um, our uh, the, the best possible means. We are extending um, uh, psychosocial support to, to all of them. Uh, those who belong to our member to our uh, member companies, member schools, to the chapters. We provide uh, help to them. Um, in terms of the psycho social intervention, yes, we, we do that. Um, but I, I think this, got, this has to be elevated to the institutional, to the agency level as well, because at the bottom line really is how do you provide them with both short-term and long-term uh, means so that they can cope up economically. It's, it's something that we cannot provide uh, to, to everybody. Uh, I think, um, well, in our own little ways, our, the schools, um, our, our co companies like FastCut, I see here, and uh, we, we, we uh, give uh, all support. We have PTC that also provide support to their uh, women. The magnitude of the problem because of this pandemic, there's so much that has to be done. And I think the good administrator has also uh, received our our proposal uh, during our previous uh, meetings with him uh, that it is best for Marina being the uh, the uh, maritime administration uh, to to really have a uh, pandemic recovery plan. Uh, this runs across the the industries. So you have shipping. You have also the seafaring, uh, shipbuilding, and ship repair. I think uh, if we, we can only listen to all the woes of everybody who's here, everybody's really even in, in education and training. Lahat po tayo ay gumagatang. And I think it would be best uh, para po matulungan at the level of agency, at the level of government. Uh, so um, I, I think this was received also by the administrator, uh, by the uh, good administrator when we had our meeting. And uh, he also said that uh, uh, that would be part of their, uh, their uh, moving forward action. Um, and then if I may, uh, our good MC here, pwede ko bang isegue na rin. There's another, there's another concern that we want, that we want also to uh, elevate uh, to let everybody here get to participate because I understand symposium like this, parang sometimes we're, we're, we're stifled to speak. We cannot uh, even parang speak our uh, yung mga suggestions po natin. I think this is the what the administrator really wants, not to hear uh, from stakeholders like us. Ano po yung pwedeng maitulong ng ating uh, ng, at, ng uh, ahensya, no, ng marina. So, um, yung kanina pong narinig niya from uh, Captain Morales, he being, of course, he in, in the manning, uh, he has a manning agency, he's also with uh, ISP into cooperatives, he's also with uh, shipbuilding and ship repair, that's why we're very happy to have him uh, leading the way uh, to, you know, alternative um, modes here. 
Um, I think ang problema po natin, that's why sa Movement for Maritime Philippines, we're really pushing for a high level, uh, high level action. So when we had the National Marine Summit last year, uh, we had it worked out with the National Coast Watch Council under the Office of the President. Because we know, investment-wise po, pera po ang napakabigat na problema din ng maritime. If you do not have this uh, support to us, uh, so that we can revitalize the, the industry, our shipping, domestic shipping, our shipbuilding and ship repair. Kaya lang po, um, Mr. Administrator, nabanggit po namin sa inyo, kaya po kailangan ay high level. Because uh, when you look even at the NEDA plan, yes, there is, uh, there is there there are plans on shipping, but hindi po, being a maritime and archipelagic nation, hindi po tayo priority. And I think part of what we need to do is really to be all out promoting maritime industry, being a maritime nation, an archipelagic country. Kailang the only way to go for social economic development is really improve on the maritime industry. So yun po yung dalawa siguro ng pwede natin maisama na pwede pong masagawa ng uh, marina. Uh, the first is the re recovery plan. It's a pandemic recovery plan moving towards the, the long term which is on the MIDP because I, I, I really believe that the pandemic will not end this soon. All our woes, all our challenges will not end tomorrow. Even if the vacuna is there, I don't think it will answer to give us, you know, the, the, it can be a stimulus, but, you know, stimulus has to be also in monetary terms. So lahat po tayo ay humihingi ng, ng tulong. Kami po sa mariners in, in Region 5, uh, apektado rin po kami kasi although hindi po mataas ang infection doon, but schools like us, we know how the impact is. So we are waiting for that and I think um, if, if we can give this, even kanina po nabanggit ko na talagang uh, the impact, economists have mentioned, the impact on women is so even harsh because nawala na po sila ng pako, they get all over home, wala nang tabaho, so rising incidents of suicide, rising incidents of even domestic violence, and dyan po lahat yun. So I think if we go for alternative economic opportunities, even for women, um, this will go a long way. So uh, I, I, I submit that to the uh, uh, this will be two good uh, initiatives and I uh, push our legislator because it's legal obstacles. Po, no? You talk of investments, no. even the PSA, Hello. the Public Service Act, napakalaking issue po niyan, ano? at papasa po ang foreign investors. Uh, masyado po malawak ang do this just with Marina. It has to be a whole nation, whole government approach, and they have to realize there's only economic development in this country if and when they see maritime industry really as the key to this development efforts. Salamat po. Pasensya po, I, 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 every time we talk about it, really, we're, we're so passionate uh, about all of this. Thank you. Can I respond to the uh, comments of uh, Ma'am Merli? Yes, Ma'am Merli, um, that's the intent of this um, uh, work, uh, symposium. Na sana yung mga plano natin, if there are plans from the stakeholders, and then incorporate natin sa iniisip ng marina, and then come up with one strategic uh, action plan for each particular uh, sector in the maritime industry that we will be using uh, to um, push forward our uh, uh, yung, yung, um, vision natin sa maritime industry. So, uh, yes, magsama-sama tayo magtutulungan uh, para kung meron kayong mag magandang idea, yun ang, ang gagawin ng ating uh, maritime industry authority. Maraming salamat sa comment. Salamat sir, Ma'am Lee. So, it's all about looking at high-level action. So, whole of the nation, if not, whole of the industry approach because it's for the improvement of the entire maritime. So, related po dun sa mga napag-usapan on investment, we have your question. Siguro po open to our three resource speakers. What are the top three major attractive investment areas in the maritime industry now? And is there a need for significant investments? Attractive in terms of potential profitability and contribution to the achievement of Marina's plan. So 
I think it's soliciting information or suggestion on what we think are the three top three major attractive investment areas sa maritime. It's a question from Ms. Corazon Claudio. So open po to all our resource speakers to respond. asking people for suggestion on what are the three, top three. Yes, sir. Top maybe, three. Uh, maybe, maybe request um, Dao to respond to this. Yes, sir. Uh, administrator, sir. Good morning. Good morning, Dao. Uh, thank you, Administrator. Uh, thank you, Madam uh, uh, Corazon uh, Claudio for this uh, question. Uh, well, as, as mentioned earlier by the administrator, the, 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 the objective of this uh, symposium really, again, to present to the stakeholders the, the eight programs, major programs of our MIDP. So we need to populate, we need to identify specific projects or investments, of course, that should come from the, our stakeholders. So I... Uh, uh, well, for uh, three major attractive uh, investment for the maritime industries, well, number one is, of course, uh, the supply in, uh, uh, of uh, maritime labor. Uh, uh, I'm referring to the seafarers, uh, considering that the Philippines, well, 25% of the, the total uh, world fleet is manned still by Filipinos. Uh, we, we still have the, uh, the advantage of this uh, 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 as, as, as far as uh, uh, supply of uh, competent uh, seafarers to, to man the, the world fleet. So with that, uh, of course, we need also to, uh, uh, of course, uh, assist. Uh, the government uh, needs to, to assist as well uh, 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 how to uh, deliver, how to come up with a, a competent uh, uh, certificated uh, seafarer through uh, education, uh, that's one, uh, for the maritime uh, higher education institutions, and uh, of course uh, training, uh, providing training to the seafarers, that's the, the, the one of the investments that we need also uh, input from our uh, stakeholders. Number two is uh, the, the shipbuilding and ship repair. Uh, considering also that the Philippines is a number four, uh, 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 number four uh, as far as the order book uh, worldwide on uh, shipbuilding, uh, well, of course we have uh, she, we have Keppel, and uh, now we just heard from the administrator that there are uh, investors uh, that are uh, also uh, will open uh, operate again Hanjin. So we need uh, also, we have, we have other than this uh, uh, big uh, ship, ship building uh, industries uh, that locate uh, in the Philippines. We have also more, we still have uh, suitable areas uh, in the Philippines to, to uh, construct a shipyard. We have a supply of labor as well. Uh, uh, skilled uh, uh, shipyard workers, and, and maybe the, the only challenge is, uh, of course, the, the, the availability of the raw materials, because basically uh, uh, shipbuilding, uh, uh, most of the raw materials are imported. But uh, uh, another, another uh, opportunity is uh, in the development of our domestic shipping. Uh, we are uh, really uh, into uh, the modernization of our domestic fleet. Uh, we we, we uh, open uh, rural routes, uh, especially in the nautical highway uh, run. Uh, we, we need to improve the, 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 the shipping uh, services. And we can see uh, there are uh, a lot of uh, uh, ship owners uh, that respond to our modernization program as well. So we, we another opportunity, of course, uh, the, the, the government is embarking on the improvement of the maritime safety. Uh, we, we need to deploy uh, technologically improved hull materials. Um, 
we we need a replacement for these uh, wooden hulled ships that operate uh, in our uh, our uh, uh, our local uh, residents no doon sa mga isla so we, we need also to 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 uh, this is also an opportunity especially for the small uh, uh, small uh, uh, boat uh, boat uh, uh, boat yards and uh, of course to our to our uh, to our ship owners and prospective ship owners we also uh, want to develop the coastal inland uh, waterways transport system uh, of course uh, this this alter this is an alternative no to the uh, yung heavy traffic uh, by land so we need to develop uh, we we will come up with a feasibility study we have identified areas as presented earlier also by the administrator. So in, in Luzon, I think it's from Manila to Cavite, Manila to Batangas, and uh, Metro Cebu, and uh, da Metro Davao. So I, I think that uh, so far uh, we have identified all these uh, uh, major attractive uh, investment in the maritime industry, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pop Deputy Administrator Dinopol. So from other from our other resource speakers, if they wish to respond, the question again is what of what do you think are the top three major attractive investment areas in the industry now? And is there a need for significant investments? Salamat po. Uh, may I yes, add sir. The, uh, comment of uh, Dow, um, engineer net Dinopol. Yung... Palakasin din natin yung, uh, na natin, ship, sir, yung domestic shipping natin for maritime tourism. Uh, marami tayong tourist sa uh, bansa, kaya lang ang problema natin yung from the, especially in Palawan, uh, yung movement ng ating tur tourist uh, in the various places. There, you know, Palawan is a very beautiful place. Uh, daming mga gandang uh, um, uh, tourist attraction doon. But again, yung problema nga natin is kulang tayo ng nagdadala ng mga ano sa mga uh, ano sa areas where our tourists can visit. Probably we can also invest on uh, develop or uh, modernize our uh, ship services uh, for maritime tourism. So that, that, yun lang ang gusto kong dagdag. Thank you. Sir, from our other resource speakers po. So the top three um, investment that we think uh, can help us sustain the industry. All right, so Pen, so yes, ma'am. Okay, so we would also like to relay this message of appreciation to Ma'am Marley. It came from Attorney Zoe Goko. Very well said, Ma'am Marley. Government should take a second look for a more attractive intervention for maritime industry. The, ta the fact the fact to achieve all these should be made institutional since the exposure and diversified approach entails a very huge investment. The sustainable development of the industry must not dwell heavily on the labor supply. Salamat po, Attorney Gong. So, related to the earlier discussion on ship management, there is this question from VA Pono or Vapono, Sir Vic Pono. Okay, address to our Sir Administrator. While it is true that the Philippines is one of the many growing capital of the world, it is also possible that the Philippines can be one of the major hubs for actual ship management business like Hong Kong and Singapore, where lots of Filipino technical and marine superintendents managers are employed. Philippines is very competitive in this aspect because we have the capability at hand, both knowledge and experience. However, there are only few ship managers and one is represented by Ship Managers Association of the Philippines. What can Marina possibly do to promote this sector or industry? It's all about, sir, the promotion of the ship management business. Yeah, anyone from uh, Marina who can answer that uh, question? Sir, yes, no. Administrator, sir. Thank you, thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. Um, Mr. Vic Puno. Uh, well, 
uh, this is really, again, this is really the intent of this uh, symposium. We need inputs uh, uh, from the stakeholders such as this. So with that, this is, I, an, uh, I identified a, a business opportunity uh, for our Philippine uh, maritime industry. I uh, will take note on this and uh, we'll, we'll uh, include this in our, our list of uh, 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 prospective uh, investments in the maritime industry and uh, the, the, the government as well, uh, the marina will come up also with proposed policies on how to develop uh, this, this uh, business. Uh, though this is not an emerging business, uh, it has been existing, but we really need to promote this one as well uh for 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 the uh, philippine maritime industry we'll take note on this um uh, sir uh, mr puno thank you sir thank you daw salamat sa comment uh, we will certainly look into this uh, thank you uh, sana makapagbigay ka ng magandang concept sir um uh, that we can uh, adapt or a good plan that we can adapt to uh, ano, to push through with your uh, comments salamat sa for raising this uh, issue. Yeah, may, may I, may I, uh, yes, ma'am. I can't find because my raise the hand is, so I am yes, raising my hand. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Anyway, uh, yeah, I, I, I saw that question. Very interesting, the, the question or comment. Uh, very interesting indeed. And I do agree. You know, the state, the, the state of, um, uh, where we are now only reflects the myopic view of how of where exactly is maritime industry in the economic in the bigger economic development plan. No? Uh, this is not just Marina; it's actually the whole government, no? the, the whole policy no? of ng gobyerno po, no? Why? Uh, we can't. We we are maritime higher educational institutions. I will just cite, for example, in our case. Um, all of us, my, uh, maritime higher ed, um, we are considered maritime educational institutions. And, then, and yet, look at our programs. Our programs are so limited with seafaring programs, marine transportation and marine engineering. Why am, am, am I mentioning this? You know, we are as good as what we produce in schools. We are as good as what we develop, you know, in our curriculum. And this is why our, our curriculum for the past years, uh, and this is an issue with us, even with, with PAM, you know, with the uh, higher ed institutions. Um, so that when EMSA cracks on us, um, hits us, wala po tayong ibang alternative. Why we're so focused with c -theory. Let me ask how many schools are offering ship management? If you want to be to, to get engaged or to be educated in ship management, where do you go? You go to Singapore, you go to other countries. Why not in the Philippines? Because it is not part of the agenda. That's how simple it is, I think. No? So uh, what is the what is the direction now? That's why for movement in Maritime Philippines, um, we are actually moving towards that developing a curriculum that is broad-based. Yes, we are very strong. We are very strong with seafaring. Yes, we are number one. Others say we're no longer number one, we're number two. But um, what other alternatives do you offer our thousands of seafarers when they lose their jobs? Wala po tayong ibang alternatives. And so we have domestic shipping, pero is domestic shipping getting that much support as well? Even the even the, the environment for which they they actually exist, there's a lot of um, problems on the on the ground. So ang ang sagot po namin jan for the movement of maritime Philippines is a curriculum, um, not just seafaring based. It has to be broad based, meaning it can go into shipping business. Bakit po puro skills lang? Kasi tinitignan natin for the longest time since the 1970s that we are as good as skills of the seafarers. But you know, we have, we have very good officers who are being employed in Singapore, in other countries, in, in the US, and even in Europe. Sina po yung mga ship managers, yung mga superintendents. We met somebody from, from uh, in Japan, technical superintendent. Pero nandun po siya serve. Why? 
because we do not have really a very dynamic and good ship management business here. So uh, in short, it starts with education. It starts with, syempre po, mag-offer kami ba ng ship management? Eh, kung wala naman takers, saan po pupunta yung aming, aming i-educate? Diba? So there's got to be a whole, again, I go back to the whole industry, uh, whole government, because the private sector can actually provide the stimulus. Yes, there's the, there, are, there are also funds there around with, with um, po ang FASCAT, ang dami pong magsaysay, there's PTC, and dyan po mga kaibigan natin. Pero if the, if the environment is not suitable to put in those investments, where do we go? So, um, it, well, with us, with the higher ed, we're actually moving towards that. A curriculum that can actually be even port administration. Nagde-develop na po ng ports na yun. We understand from GM uh, Santiago, no? from GMJ. Bakit po hindi tayo mag ports administration? Meron pong yung ship management. Bakit din po hindi pwede mag ship management? So, these are some of the courses that can be offered by schools. So, it is not just seafaring. Um, kailangan po ay mas malawak. After all, we are a maritime nation. We are an archipelagic country. Um, that is, uh, and, and this is where we should also be uh, able to generate support from the legislators. No? Kaya po, uh, sana no, mas maraming nandiyan sa le legislation na nakakaintindi ng ating maritime industry. Otherwise, without this legislative agenda, where do we go? Because they will just cite to us certain laws that prohibit us to get into, you know, even the PSA now is such a big issue. So it, it's something really that has to go up. And I think all of us should be marketing people for each other. But at the end of the day, where is government there? Kaya po sa Movement for Maritime Philippines, actually we've gone up to there, the office of the president. But what has also happened? Kung wala pong support, even NEDA, pinuntahan na pa rin po namin because NEDA actually crops the economic uh, development plan for the country. And uh, they, they, they told us, kahit po ito, no, I'd, I'd like also to, to say that we have gone also to the National Statistics Office before. Nagtatanong po kami ng data. Uh, sa schools po napakahalaga ng research, no? research and development. Nagtanong po kami ng isang maritime industry basket, data. Because you can only come up with good policies, good programs, if you have data available. Anong nyo po ang nalaman namin? Wala pong masyadong available data. So saan po tayo pupunta? And this is why I think uh, the, the MIDP considers that. And I think we have to really seriously promote that. Kasi kung wala pong research and development, we can never really go for all of this will be lip service. So kami po sa schools, we're doing our share. Sana po ay supportahan din to ng CHED at ng Marina being there for the STCW. It's not just STCW. I think we have to have broader and more programs that will generate more jobs, will generate more employment. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pam. So it's highlighting how we mainstream that the word maritime professional is not really limited to what we generally know. So it's really an important topic. I think related to this topic, uh, we have seen uh, Director Banyares of Franchising Service of Marina raising his hand to respond. Sir Attorney Banyares po. So while waiting for uh, Director Banyares, so um, we would like to relay also some messages here on ship management from Sir Ray Estacchio. So according to Sir Ray, uh, he also has the same question with Sir Big Kanina. We have PMMA and AIMS, they are providing master and doctoral courses also for uh, ship management course. And we have a comment from Diofonse Tuniakao Ship management is not dominated by Indian nationals. The decision is to, to appoint a ship manager is that of a ship owner. So perhaps the opinion of fame in JMG may also be sought. So, um, okay, so Sir Administrator here uh, would like to relate to everyone that the Maritime Industry Authority is with the industry in transforming 
and you know realizing all of these good insights and education is really is the key uh director banares are you ready po uh, thank you good morning uh, thank you attorney and uh, good morning yes, administrator and uh, to all the, the guests uh, in this uh, symposium uh, this that's true that uh, ship management is really we bring a very bright prospect to uh, the, the uh, for the maritime sector of the philippines and uh uh that's uh, also correct uh, the the uh the, the uh, uh opinion of uh, uh Merle is correct that uh, it needs a whole of a government approach because uh marina will need uh, the the uh, help of other agencies such as the DOF and the bureau of customs because in ship management we need uh the, the facilitation of the importation of uh, ship uh, parts of ships and other uh, tax incentives that's why this forum the the MIDP on Friday uh, we invited the uh, guests from uh, the OF and other government agencies and uh, we will bring this uh, point uh, raised by uh, our uh, guests here about the uh, uh, ship management uh, uh, business and uh, so that uh, it will be brought to the attention of other agencies of how they can help in the promotion of this uh, ship management, sir, on a Friday and during our symposium with the other agencies of the government. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pop Director Attorney Benares. So before we proceed, I think Ma'am Corazon uh, sent a private message to respond to the answers a while ago on her query on investment opportunities. I would also like to bring up or relate to the body, to the plenary, a comment here on the plight of our domestic cadets, cadets on board domestic ship. There's a comment from Sir Expedito Columnas Jr. We cannot deny that some or most of our cadets on board domestic ship suffers or suffer exploitation such as no proper billeting area, insufficient food, not even a proper place to eat, most especially those on board ferry ships. Yet these cadets perform their duties on board and even more so since some of their work is no longer under the scope of being a cadet. Our hands in the MHEIs were tied up since we have no choice but to embrace the system with our eyes. Close or else we cannot comply with the embarkation requirements for onboard training ratio. May we humbly ask the marina if this situation have reached their office and have taken initiative to help our cadets, cadets' living condition on board domestic ships. So may we request po a comment on it and then related to that we have a message from captain solon agreeing on the plight of our cadets being exploited in the domestic shipping industry honestly speaking the role of the maritime schools really needed as well as implementing these programs for the cadets the living conditions should also be checked and the standards should also be qualified by the school for marina or captain jeffrey solon uh, we can probably regulate or allow the vessel to accept cadets if they can present a cadet program and to include the quarters of the cadets should be, and the quarters of the cadets should be in place. So I hope that answers the question. Uh, may I now call on again, Ms. Corazon Claudio, ma'am, are you ready? Okay, you uh, thank, you, thank you very much. Can you hear me? I'm just using my phone. Loud and clear, ma'am. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, the point on education, I think, is great. I even have a name for you alre already. Asian Maritime Management Institute, I mean, <laughs> or something like that. Uh, recall how we set up the Asian Institute of Management. It was a collaboration among, among schools in management, but we elevated it to make it uh, Asian, because the name is quite important in this business of uh, education also as in all other businesses. Okay, I come from the Management Association of the Philippines, which is composed of mostly CEOs. So uh, all of the large investors are uh, in the Philippines are mostly members of MAP, the CS, et cetera. So, the sources of investments are there. Uh, so one thing that I can uh, do to help, uh, because we do this for other industries or groups of industries like SMEs and uh, energy, uh, et cetera, is to have a uh, special, uh, something like startup or investment forum 
where those who have ideas uh, for investments can present them to potential investors if you are ready to make presentations. Uh, I asked for three major investment areas, but uh, the one who answered gave a lot more. No, So that's very interesting. And we will be happy to help there. Uh, I, I think I mentioned that Doris uh, Ho and I are both life members of MAP. I, I think I'm just a little bit older than her in membership, not about 10 years older, but we're life members. So we've been there for quite some time. And uh, I chair the Sustainable Development Committee and Partners. So this is one thing that uh, you can add to your action points that we can work on if you are interested. And I am very much interested in the education uh, area to, to help you uh, bring together these schools. Uh, some of you are already have them. I heard that some of you are already uh, offering courses in business, etc. But I think what is needed is to elevate and to have a brand for it that will uh, allow us to compete internationally. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ma'am Corazon, for that follow-through insight. Really uh, well noted po. Maraming maraming salamat po. Uh, we have here another question from Sir Samuel G. Razon. So if I may read his question. Until now, sh some shipping lines still employ or use manual issuance of passenger tickets, even in handwritten entries, knowing that this old system is prone to ticket scalping. What is the action or plan of Marina with regard to this issue? So response po on the query about uh, this employment of manual issuance of passenger tickets. Administrator, sir. Yes po, ma'am. May I respond? Thank you. Uh, thank you for uh, raising this question. Yes, uh, we, we, we encourage uh, the, 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 uh, uh, for the ship owners to engage in an uh, e-ticketing uh, system. Uh, in fact, uh, 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 the, the, the PPA just launched uh, recently the, the, this one uh, e -ticket, uh, passenger e-ticketing uh, system in Batangas. But uh, well, uh, all uh, we 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 encourage again. We encourage all, all the the passenger ship owners to really engage now uh, uh, to adapt the 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 e ticketing uh, system. Uh, of course, uh, considering under the the, the new normal. You know. uh, regarding scalping, uh, yes, uh, uh, we have an existing uh, circular on that. Uh, penalizing scalpers and normally this happen uh, during peak season but uh, definitely with our uh, with our uh, Ma Mar Mal Malasakit help desk Marina Malasakit help desk we closely uh, monitor really the movement of passengers at port and uh, closely monitor as well uh, uh, victims for uh, or for uh, scalping uh, uh, in at the in the port area, so we, we are addressing this, sir. We are uh, we are addressing this uh, concern. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bob. And I think if I may also relay this question again from Seaway Magazine, Sir Eloy. Um, according to Sir Eloy, it is apparent that major sectors of the industry. Education and training, domestic shipping, etc., are present here at the symposium. Is it possible to come up with specific industry proposals for recovery plan from the pandemic? Example for domestic shipping: what specific measures can be adopted to help them recover? How about the other sectors? So, I guess impliedly, this question has has been answered. But if the our resource speakers would like to respond to highlight specifically uh, those. Um, Proposals, specific industry proposals for the recovery, recovery plan from the pandemic. I suppose, sir. Thank you for uh, that suggestion. Actually, yan yung intention itong workshop. 
um, in the succeeding days, we will discuss the other uh, sector of the maritime industry. So kung mayroong magandang programa dito na lalabas or any good ideas, uh, the Marina team will consolidate it. And, and then based on that, we can craft a strategic plan on how to, uh, to address uh, the development and modernization of the various sectors in the maritime industry uh, based on the specific uh, suggestion and target we are putting in place. So everyone is on board here. We are listening. And uh, rest assured that the team Marina will work uh, with what you are recommending uh, for the future of our maritime industry. Pagtutulungan natin po itong lahat. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. So the last question here, I think it would be best to ask Diofonse Tuniakao. Sir, ma'am, may we ask you to turn your video on to relay your question about, I think this relates to shipboard training. Are you ready, po? Uh, yes. Uh, yes, sir. Salamat, po. Is, uh, to, to, to answer the issue of exploitation of cadets in domestic shipboard training, during the past Marine Administration, I think under Chief Engineer Amaro, there is a move to revise the provision covering that under the PMMR. Unfortunately, when the next admission came, this was forgotten. So up to now, the PMMR, which was made almost half a century ago, is not yet revised. I think Marina should now consider re reviewing this, revising this, present this again to the public, get the comments of all concerned sectors to answer really the domestic seating exploitation of cadets on seaport training. Thank you. Thank you, sir, to Niakao. So, any response? I think the issue raised was on the status of the revision of the BMMRR and the issue on shipboard training. Administrator, sir? May I respond? Thank you, sir. Uh, yes, thank you, Captain uh, to Niakao. Uh, uh, well, uh, well uh, yes, uh, uh, masyadong matagal na po nga yung PMMR. Uh, the we we have uh, prepared the draft uh, uh, revision of this uh, uh, Bible of our uh, uh, Philippine uh, merchant ships. Mm -hmm. uh, we 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 will uh, we have uh, the the maritime safety service uh, uh, committed to deliver the the first chapter because we we need to to uh, uh, revise this by chapter. Uh, the, the passenger uh, ships will be delivered uh, within the year, and uh, as well as the the cargo cargo ships, also. So uh, we will be presenting this in the Mancom by uh, October, and uh, hopefully uh, once uh, uh, approved by the Mancom, uh, we will present this to for pub, subject for public consultation in which all, all the stakeholders will be encouraged to participate and uh, provide inputs to our draft uh, uh, PMMR for passenger ships. Uh, regarding, uh, sir, for the uh, shipboard training, well, uh, the Marina uh, late last year issued a an advisory uh, jury advisory uh, requiring all all uh, inter-island uh, uh, ship owners uh, operating 500 gross tons uh, above uh, ships to submit to marina uh, the 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 number of uh, of uh, of uh, cadets they can accommodate actually the, the advisory only set uh, four cadets at the deck and uh, four cadets at the engine if they can provide they can accommodate more, so uh, they have to to submit this uh, shipboard uh, plan uh, for for subject for approval by the marina. Regarding the uh, the accommodation uh, problem on board, uh, well, uh, marina and as well as of course uh, the, the Department of Labor are also uh, checking on this uh, the the sea the uh, the, the condition of the, the crew uh, on board ships, sir. That, that's all. Thank you, sir. 
Thank you very much. Any further responses po on the last question raised? So we may, due to time constraint, we may entertain some more questions. So you may still type it in the chat box or raise your hands po dito sa ating Zoom meeting. Uh, may, may I just... Uh, yes po, ma'am. Very on the on the uh, recovery plan, uh, as we initially mentioned to the administrator, uh, I think we, we had um, initial discussions with the group uh, who are also uh, with the different associations in the industry. So we will be providing uh, Marina, um, the administrator here, uh, um, a copy of what we initially have. Uh, that will help prepare the discussion. Thank you, ma'am. Um, any other manifestations as regards the issue and the topic raised on the recovery plan? So we also thank here a message of appreciation from Alejo de Timas, Holy Cross of Davao College. Thank you, Marina, for giving emphasis on the welfare of cadets on board. So, marami pong salamat. On ship management, I think we were able to, a while ago, we were able to track or see some more information on the other schools offering it. Um, we have here uh, just sharing po, it may help too. For BSMT, BSMRE graduate, the John B. Laxon Foundation Maritime University Graduate School is offering Master in Ship Management, Master in Maritime Management, Master in Maritime Education, and Doctor of Philosophy in Maritime Education. Okay, so are there any other questions or any comments that our participants would like to? Relate to the plenary. Okay, so before we end, I guess it's but proper for us to request uh, a closing statement for today's um, symposium on the topics covered. So the topic for today covers the entire maritime industry. So we still have two more days, two more fruitful, meaningful exchanges of ideas and inputs. So if you may request our resource speakers again, should they wish to emphasize uh, important opinions, suggestions uh, that were discussed extensively today. Yes, Pooh, sir. First, thank you very much for uh, participating in this first day of uh, our uh, symposium. We look forward to be with you again uh, for your cooperation on the, the, the two succeeding days. Um, and thank you for your insight, for your counsel. Um, your, your, your team, Marina, is certainly with you. Um, this is our direction. We are going to transform uh, Marina into being uh, a partner of uh, the maritime industry. Hindi na to sariling Marina lang, kundi dapat sama-sama tayo ng tutulungan. Because what we are doing today we lay out the foundation of the future of our maritime industry, not only of the industry, but the generation of uh, Filipino people. Right? Mga anak natin, mga apo natin ay makikinabang sa gagawin na, ginagawa natin ngayong week na to uh, as we move forward, as I said. So thank you very much uh, sa lahat na, na participate dito sa first day. Uh, congratulations to Team Marina as well. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any other closing statement statements from Mamuli and Captain Morales? Yeah, uh, thank you very much, of course. Uh, um, again, all our best wishes to the administrator and his great team. Uh, thank you for being so inclusive by including Limacril in uh, this discussion to provide a gender perspective. But at the end of the day, it's not just the gender, it's all of us being Filipinos. 
And um, this is our, ang, ang tawag, ang battle cry po natin, mana mo, ay mana po natin. So we want to uh, make sure that uh, all of us will really have that kind of for our children. In the industry uh, that is a dynamic, that is old, that is built, ships that are built, operated, and managed uh, all for economic developing one. So from all for all the women who are with us today, um, it's not women's month, but every day is women's day. We carry the burden of the world, of our homes, but nevertheless, all of us, men or women, we're all resilient as Filipinos. So thank you very much for Muli, Administrator, Sir Vice Admiral uh, and uh, uh, Director Mon for uh, being so inclusive and to the team, good luck po sa inyong uh, mga ano. I, I think that towards the end of the three day symposium, um, the call really will be to be relevant at this, during this pandemic times. And we will, we are for um, collaboration and not competition. Maraming salamat po. Thank you po, Ma'am Merli. Uh, Captain Morales, sir. Uh, thank you sa Marina at uh, sa pag-invite sa akin. Of course, sa pagkakataong uh, makapagsalita on behalf of the integrated shippers of the Philippines. At siyempre, uh, kasama ang uh, movement for Maritime Philippines. Sana po ang ating mga advokasya patungkol sa maritime development ay pagpatuloy at masuportahan ng ating Marina leadership. Maraming salamat. Thank you very much, sir. So, if I may, I think the operative words that will guide us came from our administrator himself. First, collaborate. Then, of course, the need to integrate and further exchanging of ideas and opinions. Yan naman po ang napakahalaga para po masiguro natin na tuloy-tuloy po tayo kahit na meron tayong pandemya. So, I'll be now turning over the floor again to our Master of Ceremonies. Ma'am Eva, please. Thank you so much. Ooh, that was a very exciting first day by the words of our Honorable Administrator. This has been a very exciting first day. What a successful and very fruitful kickstart for our three-day event. That concludes our day one of the Maritime Industry Symposium. Congratulations to everyone that were able to join us this morning. We hope that all of our friends from the regional offices, our stakeholders, and all all our participating agencies were enlightened through our discussions this morning. Thank you so much as well to our respective resource speakers from our honorable administrator to Ma'am Merli San Pedro and Captain Morales, sir. Thank you so much. And we also would like to thank our very enthusiastic participants for sharing their thoughts and suggestions and as well as our very endearing moderator for today, Attorney Loretta Zara. Thank you so much, Paul. Please follow the official social media accounts of Marina for updates on our week-long celebration of the National Maritime Week 2020. We hope that you can all join us tomorrow for our day two of symposium, wherein we will be tackling initiatives, innovations, and investments on maritime manpower development. Our topic for tomorrow is surely very promising. So once again, this has been your host, Eva Ahero from the Maritime Industry Authority. Thank you so much, everyone. God bless you all and see you all tomorrow at 9 a.m.